My favorite quality about Pops is that he's incredibly honest. At least you always know where you stand with Pops. So I like that. I'll give it to you straight down, straight down both barrels. All right, folks, it is uh, just a great opportunity to chat with an old friend of the show, Sidewalk Profits frontman, uh, Dave Fry's with us. We're going to talk about the new yeah. virtual tour, other stuff going on. Dave, so great to have you a chance to talk with me. Yeah. How are you doing? Doing amazing, man. It's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful day here in Nashville. I'm a new dad of three weeks. And actually, four weeks. My son turned four weeks old today, so almost a month. And uh, man, it's it's just living the dream. <laughs> That's awesome. And your your son was yeah. born right around the time, actually, a couple of days before my fourth grandchild, my second what? grandson. Yeah. So we been when my family's been stalking baby William just about because uh, you yeah. know we're walking your baby photos. There he is. So ours is baby Weston. He's uh, oh, the same same uh, same time frame. Yeah, I know. Like buds. That sounds like, Makes... that sounds like old buds already. You know. That's like an old, like a characters in an old western. That's what I yeah, thought. That'd so, be great. Yeah, that'd The William and Western Western Adventures. I mean, that's that's pretty, right. So. That's <laughs> awesome. So listen, you know, head over to sidewalkprofits.com, folks. Get yourself a ticket to the free virtual tour. But you need a yeah. ticket. You have to have a ticket live, some 3D, some HD, all sorts of cool stuff. Dave, tell me what's going on with yeah. this virtual tour thing, man. Catch everybody up. Man, I, I tell you, we we spent 150 days a year on the road, if if, if not more. And uh, man, what a blessing that my son's born. And now I'm having to be home, you know, in, in a lot of ways, there's a blessing in that uh, as scary as man, COVID times and, and pandemics, and job loss, all this scary stuff was happening. I was counting my blessings, but this virtual tour was born out of this necessity to continue to do what our hearts have called us to do, what God's called us to do and, and make music for the Lord. And, 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 you know, we got an album coming out in July and we're like, what are we going to do? How are we going to let people hear it and know about it? And, and, so my buddy Ben had this this crazy thought of we can't hit the road, but we can virtually, you know, give people a show. And it's not just like in our living room playing acoustic instruments. We're, we wanted to take it as if you were there, as if you were at the show. Uh, you know, we have uh, we, we ended up asking is Big Picture Productions and uh, a studio here in Nashville, and, and they got seven, like, television cameras and, and a, a crew of, 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 you know, cameramen, and, and they wanted to do it as if you were there. So we're playing live every single night. And, yes, you do need a ticket because we are playing for Florida. Like, it's a 300-mile radius for free. Like, if you if – you, uh, you can like pay to go to the other shows. Like if if we're in Denver and you want to really want to tune in, I think it's like nine ninety nine uh, to buy a pass. But if we're in Tampa, it's free. You just you just put you know you got to get a ticket. But once you log in, uh, it's for free just to come and watch the show. And it's as if you're there. We got like a lobby with merchandise and and before the show starts, and we have uh, 3D elements. We let the fans choose one of the songs that we're going to play, which means we've had to remember a lot of our old songs. And so, but once that song's played, we're not going to play it again the rest of the tour. So there's just a lot of fun elements that we try to we try to make it like you were, like we were there in Tampa with you. Uh, and even though you know we'll be in Nashville doing it live, uh, you know we we want it to feel like you're with us. And and so that's that was the, the heart of it all. And obviously, in the time right now, we're still a lot of travels limited. Concerts are still kind of on yeah. hold. Maybe next month, that kind of thing. What's yeah. been the response that you've gotten from folks? Being able to like give them some entertainment, give them some escape. It's got to be super positive. Yeah, people are so excited, and and you know we we spend a lot of time. I think we've been in the, the studio for about three weeks because it's a different beast. Like when you travel somewhere, you build the show and then you you go and do it. But here, you got to choreograph with that camera, when that camera comes on, look over there, or, you know, this and that. So it's been kind of a, a different way of preparation, but I think that, you know, when all said and done, we did some, some early shows just for our family and our, my, my wife said one of the best compliments she gets is that I forgot I wasn't at the show. Like I was watching it and I felt like I was at a Sawa Prophet concert, like not in my living room anymore. And that's our great hope. There's, you know, like I said, there's 3d elements. If you got those red and blue glasses from the eighties, uh, we sell them on our website, but you, if you have old red and blue 80s style 3D glasses, it literally is such a cool feature. Like it, you feel like you're falling into your TV. And we got a couple of songs that we do that on. And and so, man, I, I think more than anything, that it's been a, such a positive beginning. There's always that scare of technology and streaming and all these things. But but man, I, I think this is the best way. This is the way to 
our fans are not just fans. They're the family of God. They're, they're our great big family. And so that's what we want people to feel is, you know, our great big family, we want to, we want to be there with you. We, we want to go through everything, all this pandemic and craziness together. And this is the best way we could think to do that. Uh, Sidebarprofits.com, get your ticket, folks, for your show, or yeah. drop nine, drop, drop ten bucks, man, get a free show for ten bucks. It's you know, it's not yeah. ten dollars, not that big a deal. But I, I know people are people are listening to this, and you know, I have a my YouTube, YouTube channel that I put some of this stuff on is called sure. Pops on Pop Culture because I review movies and everything like that, and they're all going. There's nothing wrong with I that. <laughs> almost guarantee Brandon has some of those glasses, and I'm ninety percent sure I have a retro, old school '90s, '80s. 70s. Yeah. I don't even know what I got them from. <laughs> They're blue and red. Pretty need. sure, that's man. Well, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so obviously, people can expect the new songs, teasing some of the stuff off the new album. It's called "The Things That Got Us Here." Is that correct? Yes. Oh yeah. And yeah, we'll July. Be focusing on that a lot. Yeah, it comes out July 3rd. Um, you know that re- the record. It's been man, four and a half years since we released an album, and and we've been chomping at the bit to share the music. We've been actually sharing it live for a while. Uh, but but this will be our first you know first time to really introduce people to a lot of the new songs. Of course, we're gonna play you know play a lot of the hits that that, that folks will tune in for and and uh, uh, but but and, and like I said, the fans are gonna choose a deep cut or or actually there's some hits that we aren't playing so that, that'll be an option on the poll. So we'll probably end up playing one of those hits as well. But but yeah, the new record is is something that we're so uh, excited for people to hear. It, it's been you know, simmering in our hearts for five years. And even though we didn't write it during the pandemic, uh, it's crazy how God has, has molded those songs that we wrote for this specific purpose. They, he's using them for his purpose, even to speak to folks in the midst of, of, of the craziness of, of the beginning of 2020. And I think that's one of the things that got us here. This year we'll talk about probably for the rest of our lives. Uh, the rest, and, uh, and, and I think it's important that this album's coming out right now. I think that's uh, you know you've you've released Smile the uh, mm-hmm. video yep. mo- multiple videos which is you yep. playing ping pong in a total by the way you kind of look like Wayne Knight I was waiting for you to like be a Stephen Root stunt double it's a oh, little yeah, uh, dist- yeah. yeah. From it's that a lot heart, don't you man. yeah you got it you got it going on there so we got to wait for another new version of that. It, it, but it's such a great peppy song but with such a great spirit behind it talk a little bit about writing that song and putting that yeah. together yeah I think that Smile the what a lot of people don't realize is it's not about happiness. Uh, you know, happiness is, is fickle, and happiness comes and it leaves so fast. And I've, I've noticed that the older I've got, the, the less happiness seems to stick around. But the thing that remains always is joy. And I think there's a huge difference. Joy comes from, comes from Christ. It only comes from God. And, and in the midst of finding that joy and holding on to it, sometimes joy can be just a peace of quiet, calm, <laughs> you know, there's joy in that. And uh, and so I think with our, when we wrote that song, you know, we just had a Monday and I had one of those blah days. And, and it's, you know, looking back, it was just simple little things. Like I, I scratched our new hardwood floors because our oven caught fire and, and a, a tree <laughs> fell, a tree fell on my fence and then the Cubs lost. It was like the worst. And you look back and you're like, oh, that's all just dumb stuff that I was worried about. But in the midst of it, you, you can get angry. You can lose your focus on what, why you're even there. And, and so in the midst of all that, my wife looked at me and she said, it's okay. It's just stuff. And we can't, we can't be mad about this. Like, let's, we'll, we'll laugh about it someday. And lo and behold, the next day I went and we wrote a song about it, you know, just about, about all the junk that happens in life. And, and it's so easy for the devil, devil to rob you of your joy. That's one of the things he's after. And so we wanted to write a joyful song that reminded people that, that, that God's always, there's always a blessing to be counted. There's always a, a reason to choose joy in the midst of, uh, of even the worst day of our lives. Uh, we still have a, a God that's on the throne. And so that's what Smile was about. And yeah, we took that concept and we're like, what's, what's more joyful than, than, than greeting random strangers in the middle of downtown Nashville in an eighties track suit and playing ping pong. <laughs> and uh, what's funny is a lot of the, in our music video, a lot of people at the beginning are kind of gruff and walk by me and don't want to play. We had to film for like eight hours to find those people. We, so many people wanted to play ping pong that it was hard to find the angry gruff people, which was great, man. Nashville was was a, had a has a big old heart, and I was so so much fun playing ping pong for eight hours with people. <laughs> I want to see the Dave Ping Pong tour. That'd be great. So oh, you've yeah. wandered, you've wandered into one of my nickel life lessons. Pastor White uh, down here in Tampa once said yeah. to me, "It changed my life." 
Mm-hmm. Happiness is based on the things that are happening to you, but yeah. joy only comes from Jesus. That's it. And I was like, ooh, there you go. The literative. I can someone like me can even remember that. Hundred hundred percent. All right. So people love to hear the ridiculous and crazy stories and antics of my life. And I am no public persona compared to someone like you, man, traveling hundreds of day, hundreds <laughs> of cities a year and those kind of things. However, there's a great story that dates back, I believe, to 2013. You were on Winter Jam, and yep. we had we had just spoken. I think we had done an interview either on that Thursday or Friday for the Saturday show down here in Tampa. So I yep. showed up the show. This is long before Jam Nation. This is long before the VIP tickets. This is like sure. it is a general admission free for all. And I show up. I'm literally <laughs> one of like two press people. I don't think there's any other press people there. And literally, I keep getting bounced around the building. At some point, I end up locked out, and I'm like. You're the last number that I talked to that is not from the States, and I know it has to be you. Yeah. I dial this random number. Dave, yeah. do you remember me from yesterday or the day before? Can you tell me? Get me someone who could let me in this building. And then literally it was like, go around front. Tell them Dave from Sidewalk's Prophet sent you. And it was like some sort of weird sneak in the back door <laughs> 1980s theater moment. And I'm like, yep, I'm in the Ice Palace. I'm good. Thanks. I'm all right, man. Good. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah, the stuff that I you do that. sometimes. Yeah, those those days, those winter jam, you know, early days were the like the wild wild west. It was like first come first served, and a million people out in the in the at least in Florida it was beautiful because there was a million people lined up in January in Wisconsin. So like, oh, in yeah. Florida you at least no. had some sunshine. Uh, but uh, but we were so grateful that yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you made it in that day. That was very <laughs> crazy. Oh my, it's supposed to be working. Earn them a rent. Didn't get fired either. Like they they invited us back in 2016, so I guess we were okay. Yeah, you know, I had credentials. I just didn't know where to go. So, <laughs> so what is what is some of your 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 fun? You've toured with everybody, man. You obviously been yeah. on Winter Jam. You've been out with Toby. Absolutely. You've been out with Mercy Me and Crowder. Tell me a yep. funny story or something that's really kind of a cool memory you got from being out on tour. Man, there's a million of them, and and you know David Crowder is is uh, I'll, I'll focus on him because he's such a legend. Uh, I I can remember being so at the end of this Winter Jam show. I think it was 2016. At the end of the show, we would always go on stage with um with uh for King and Country, and we'd end the show together. And Crowder and and and, and everybody that read and, and me all standing next to each other and singing shoulders which is a great song and and then i noticed like one night crowder wasn't you know was sitting down and and like he just kind of looked down and i was like what's going on and then i noticed he wasn't at the at the big thing and i was like man i was like i, I was kind of mad i was like what why how could he miss this like this is such a, a cool thing and i was a little mad at him and I, I walked down the hallway and i saw next to this door it was freezing cold outside i believe we were in iowa and he was sitting down with the man that was guarding the door and so this poor old man had been sitting in front of this freezing cold door making sure that people had their credentials when they came in and david was sitting there and he had sat with him probably for two and a half hours just talking about life and and so at the moment i was i was mad that he wasn't on stage and then i come down and god gut checks me and says david's doing what i want him to do he's where i want him to be just talking to this man and it was just beautiful to see Dave, you know, Dave Crowder, this this crazy bearded guy walking the walk and sitting in the cold with this old man talking about stories and life and laughing. And I think that that's 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 what gives you gives you the goosebumps is is when people off stage are the same person on stage when they're doing what God's called them to do, even if they're skipping, you know, big family ish moments on stage there he's being the family and, and and talking to this this man freezing cold by the door and then uh, one other story i'll tell you real quick because i loved uh i love tour pranks and so that there's there's this heart touching moment from crowder but then my favorite one of my favorite tour pranks of all time was uh we were on winter jam with francesca battistelli and her band is just too much man i love them and for some reason like her merchandise manager was just a character and he's like you know what dude he goes i'm gonna play jazz flute during the set tonight and i was like what are you talking about and he goes just trust me so on the very last night of winter jam her merchandise manager like puts on this like ron burgundy suit and like takes out his flute and literally they add like an extra eight bars at the end francesca has no idea what's going on and he starts busting out a jazz flute solo complete with pyrotechnics and like it came out of nowhere and everybody you think about 20,000 people watching a guy play jazz flute uh it was pyrotechnics it was yeah who knew and like a little Ah. flame shot out of his flute and I was like I'm watching 20,000 people watch a guy play flute on stage and people were eating it up man it was legendary 
<laughs> I, I gotta find I gotta find a video clip I of Franny's Franny's face. Franny's no, face, was, jazz flute, angry, Ron Burgundy, pyro. Yeah. She couldn't be angry for too long at the jazz flute, you know. <laughs> I can't really uh, can you can can really can we take Franny really too serious when she's angry? She's just adorable. Like you're like, oh, yeah, I know you're angry, but you're not really yeah. angry. Let's just so walk and it now, off. Walk it off. Being a dad, uh, she has like four or five kids. She's a superhero, man. It's hard yeah. enough to tag team one. <laughs> oh, you're just they're just breaking you in, bro. You have no idea. I have five kids have too, no man. Idea. I and my I wife, no my idea. wife, <laughs> my wife just keeps her cape on the down low. They're amazing. They're amazing. They are. They are. So, Dave, let me close out. I got like a couple minutes left. What do you yeah. do? Your dad now. You're you know you've been married yeah. for a while. You're touring, writing songs. You got so much going on, man. What is the thing that you do to kind of like, all right, I'm gonna shut it down. People are people, you know. They always tell you, you know. I put on the pastor hat, and I'm and trying mm-hmm. to encourage people that you got to make time. I always talk about my shower routine, my first moments, you know. Talk about yeah. listening to sermons all the time. Just mm-hmm. what do you do to shut it down? All right, I got to have my time. I, I know I'm mm-hmm. busy. I know I should be doing this, but I got. Let me give you, give, let me give you minutes, give you hours, whatever you do. How do you handle that time? You know, I think uh, the one of the most important things is every morning uh, my wife and I make sure we spend time in the Word. And, you know, as, as cliche as it could be or this or that or the other, no, it's not. It's, it's absolutely uh, a getting your heart set thing where we read. Even if we're uh, – little man's crying and, can, you know, she's picking him up. We, we put it – there's there's a, a – on the Bible app you can play it like so that almost a James Earl Jones sounding guy talks the bible to you and it's beautiful uh but but as long as we're getting the word into us uh, i think that's that's a great great place to start and then at the end of every day um especially now that i'm home and not on the road even when i was on the road i'd call my wife but we make sure and we we pray every single night of our lives uh recapping the day my wife will ask what are three things that you're grateful for today what what were three highlights from your day and that's such a beautiful thing to fall into because it re- reminds you what you did that day, and then on top of it, it, you give praise to God. And so I think that those two things, the beginning and the end, set my heart, even if the middle gets a little crazy and with spit up and diapers and all these things and, and, and run into the studio and writing songs, uh, as long as we start and end our day in a, in a special place. And then during the day, to be honest, I play uh, Disney Emoji Blitz on my phone way too much. Uh, but like, you know, you got to have those you got to have those things, you know. I usually ask about guilty pleasures and you just volunteered it. That's fantastic. There it is. There it is. Like I, and I'm a movie buff. I'm sitting here in, in my living room. Oh, what's on? Head, what's on? And I I have I no I I have a, a DVD shelf that looks like Blockbuster exploded because my mom bought me all when Blockbuster went out of business, she bought me all of them. So like my top shelf is all is all sports movies. They got Hoosiers, I got Talladega Nights, I got uh, I got Dodgeball, I got Moneyball, I got Waterboy, I got you know it's just on and on. Cool Runnings is one of my favorite movies of all time. Back to the Future trilogy is next to that. I mean, on and on and on. And so I am I'm going to uh, I'm going to have to video collection wall challenge yes. you and post it on Instagram. My wife will like be like, you have no idea. Like, and, I, I did I did an interview with somebody said how many does he have? My wife chimes in. Behind the camera, by the way. No one even knows she's in the room. She's like, he has at least 1,200. I'm like, all right, wow. come on. That's about right. Yeah, that's I'm, probably, right. I'm probably knocking on 700, and that's enough. Now that Netflix exists, yeah. they're all there too. But but I yeah. do, I still physically own every single Disney classic, which is a little oh, weird wow. and a little too that's much, good. which means from, from Snow White to Wreck-It Ralph 2 or whatever the last one was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, but I have like 50 to 60, 75, 80 – Disney movies and that, and then also all the Pixar's because <laughs> I'm just weird like that. But <laughs> all right, so really so funny. there's so the golden ticket though. There you go. Do, yes. you ha- do, do you have a copy of Song of the South? I have Song of the South from Japan, and awesome. uh, it so it only it's it's the Song of the South, and then when the songs come on, there's Japanese writing on the bottom, and it like bounces on it, and like like a little dot bounces on it, so you can sing along in Japanese. And I think it's amazing. It's better than if I owned the real song of the stuff. Cause that is Japanese. fantastic. Yeah, the only time subtitles come up are during the songs, and it's pretty pretty amazing, but uh, it's yeah, all I, in English, but I love yeah, it. Yeah, I found my copy in like a dive gift shop on oh, like man. a lookout on a lookout mountain in Georgia, and there I'm like, go. I have no yeah, idea what this good. is, but I'm good. I'm good. Yep. You're awesome. Well, look, Dave Fry, Sidewalk Profits. We're so thrilled to have time with him, folks. Go over to sidewalkprofits.com. Get 
pre-order their a new album is coming out on July 3rd. Yeah. You can get tickets to one of these virtual uh, tour shows. If you're not in Tampa area, Florida, hey, man, there's plenty of states. Get your own. Uh, and just keep in contact with them. And they're doing amazing stuff, God's work, and we're just praying for them and his family growing. And uh, William is going to keep uh, Dave on his toes, but we'll be uh, thinking about him. So stay uh, tuned as we uh, head back to the show. We'll uh, drop more stuff for you. This is Kevin Murphy from Rift Tracks and Mystery Science Theater 3000. Hey, this is Mark from Casting Crowns. Hey, this is Alan Powell from the film The Song. Hey, this is Christian Kane. This is Colin Mockery. Hello, everybody. This is Ione Singleton, a.k.a. T-Dog from The Walking Dead. And you are listening to my main man, Brandon. 